What's going on everyone? It's RGB Tech back here again. In today's video, we're taking a look at the brand new of WinLater a mod for Android. And to make it even more interesting, I'll be testing it on a low-end 4GB of RAM, Mali GPU phone to see how well it actually performs. And this is their official GitHub page of the WinLater mod. As we all know, WinLater a mod is a modified version of the official WinLater emulator with some custom tweaks and features from the AEFI. They have fixed a lot of issues and improved the overall performance. If you are using a Snapdragon device, then it will be even better. Also, if you are playing older titles, you need to use this environment variable. Now let's go to releases. Right now, this is the latest version 10, AMOD 5. In this update, they modified some variables, fixed some games with white screen issues, and also other related bugs. Same as the official version. This version also comes with the Vortec driver for Mali users. As usual, download and install the package, or you can directly install it as an update. I have already installed it. Before getting into it, this is my seven-year-old Galaxy device, powered by Exynos with the Mali G71 two-core GPU. It's an overclocked device with 4GB of RAM, which is considered very low-end as of today. Now open WinLater. Here they have added two options. Terminal Backup, where you can enter commands for backups related to containers, and additional contents where you can import DXVK, Box64, or other required drivers if you get any updates. This is mostly not necessary, because you can import drivers as components inside the emulator itself. Now let's go to Settings. As usual, set Box64 version to 0.3, set Box64 preset to intermediate or performance. That's it. Now create a container. Since it's a low-end phone, set the resolution to the lowest possible, 600p or 480p. The higher the resolution, the more RAM it will use. Set graphics to Vortec, but remember, it may not work on some devices. Still, you can consider using VirGL. In configuration, set the Vulkan version according to your device. Here, this phone has API version 1.1, so I'll set it here. Set device memory to 2 gigabytes. Based on this device, it has 55 Vulkan extensions. As usual, set DXVK to version 1, 10, 3. Set the FPS meter on. The remaining settings are the same as usual. Set startup selection to aggressive and Windows version to 7 or 10. Now save the container. Now let's boot it. All right, the device memory usage is almost 62%. We have only around 3.6 GB of RAM. If we go to the start menu, there are a lot of custom features this emulator offers. You can directly install the required drivers from here. Now let's check out Direct3D. Well, it gives an error. Let's check out the GPU info. As you can see, this phone's GPU is configured to the Vortec driver. You can also see the assigned memory heap size here. Now, if we go to OpenGL, it's unavailable. Well, most titles require GL support, especially if you want to run DirectX 9 or 10 titles. Anyways, now switch to the VirGL driver. OpenGL version is set to default. Let's check again. This time, Vulkan is unavailable, but OpenGL is available and configured correctly with the Mesa driver. Now, let's test Direct3D again. All right, it runs perfectly, averaging around 50 FPS. Let's also check out some other tests. Everything is working without any issues. The GPU is shown as GTX 480 by default, which is good. Now it's time for the real test. Here, I have copied GTA 4 into the phone. Let's see if it works. Well, the memory is already getting full. As expected, we got an error. Anyways, now let's try Dead Space 2, a quite intensive DirectX 9 title based on Shader Model 3.0. Let's see if it can load. All right, it loaded, but it's very laggy. Let's go into the settings and set it to low. Okay, we are getting around 15 FPS. There are a lot of graphical glitches, but if you have a Helio G99 or Dimensity 6300 or above, you'll get much better performance on the Mali G57 GPU. Anyway, that's it for today's video, guys. Overall, this update brings a lot of useful improvements, bug fixes, and with custom features, too. 
If you found this video helpful, make sure to drop a like. And if you're new here, consider subscribing for more content like this. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.